Welcome to this video series of Team Strike's most ambitious card counting trip to date. In this video, you'll see us go to the Bahamas and take a huge risk playing there. There was a very real chance that this part of the trip could end up with us getting zero playing time before getting kicked out. We're in the Bahamas. Look how really fancy this place is. We have a freaking basketball court. We don't have a basketball, but we have a basketball court. Already sweating so much. I've only been outside for five seconds. You might be wondering why the Bahamas. Not only is it expensive to fly to, but there are only two casinos. With only one of those casinos being possible for big player slash spotter team play, like we did in Project Liberty. We were originally planning a trip there because one person wanted to fully bankroll our team to hit this one casino. They had their reasons, which meant that this risky trip was risk free. But during our preparation, they pulled out. By then, we'd been training, we'd got our bet spread sorted, and and we were excited. So we quickly scraped together a bankroll of 107k and thought, screw it, let's play some blackjack. But this would be very high risk, or to put it bluntly, it was a really dumb idea. Our expenses were really high. Flights and accommodation for Bahamas costing us over 10K, way more than we planned on spending. We estimated for this part of the trip to be worth it, we need to get a total of three hours of team play. Each hour of play would be worth about four and a half K in expected value, meaning at three hours, we'd exceed our Bahamas expenses. But ideally, we wanted to play more and actually have a profitable time, not just a break even time. Three hours may not seem like much, but our chances of getting kicked out of the first casino were very high. Casinos share information with each other and our names and faces had been shared a lot. All they'd have to do is recognize one of us and we'd all get backed off. We needed three hours, but there was a very real chance that we'd get like five minutes. That would leave us with only one playable casino, which wouldn't be suitable for team play, where a fast back off was just as likely. And we weren't even sure if the conditions were right at that first casino. We'd got info from one card counter that said it would be suitable for team play, but just before we left, we got info from another card counter saying it definitely wouldn't be. The Bahamas could easily end up causing us a massive loss because of expenses alone. We did not have have a backup plan. Oh yeah, there's one more problem. I'm the idiot that uploads card counting videos and still expects to be anonymous when I go to casinos. You know how well that goes. I'll tell you, Steve, right now I don't care. Well, you know my name already. Right. Oh yeah? From what? YouTube, I believe. Did you did you know my name because the guy told you or because no. the Steve, guys upstairs told me? Steve told Bridges. Oh, all right, okay. Even if no one in the casino has seen my videos, they still use the same database a lot of casinos use that have a lot of photos of my face as someone to look out for. For Project Liberty, I had great success with the disguise. Although I quickly realized one disguise wasn't enough and just shaving my beard and adding a wig wasn't going to cut it. We put together a series of disguises, each designed to make me look like a totally different person. We went all out, beard dye, haircut, face bumpers, rings, necklaces, earrings, fake tattoos, outfits. No one needs to see this much chest. Wigs, so many wigs. And that's just appearance. Given that one time I'd been recognized from my voice alone, I figured that could use some work. This is Alex. She's a dialect coach and she was there to teach me an American accent. Let's okay. go for the first sentence. Oh, what? Can you give me the example <laughs> sure, of that? Sure, I can, I can do it first. I'm not gonna do, do it for every single one, but I'll okay. start you off. <laughs> She's actually not even American. She's doing an accent. It's about losing that self-consciousness, which you can only do when you're not thinking about it anymore, which does yeah. take some work. Every time she switched back to a normal accent, it really threw me off. So I'm an American, I'm blowing everything together, and I'm totally confident I'm giving you this, and if I start doing this in an English accent, I sound really angry with you. <laughs> I did not feel comfortable doing an accent, as you can probably tell. The woman shouldn't put the full, full... <laughs> God, this is so hard. <laughs> I found learning an accent really difficult. I'm just too bloody English. Sheila. Yeah. Sheila. Peter. Yes. Sheila. Whereas we go Peter, Sheila. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so same. it's the same ending sound. Not to mention that every time I did the accent, my voice sounded different. Changing my accent without changing my voice was really hard. The woman shouldn't put the full pudding on the put 
Oh no, the butchers. <laughs> After hours and hours of practice, I still found it incredibly hit or miss. There'd be times where it sounded passable. Jeff edged his head into the Thames in an effort to save his best friend from the treacherous bell of death. Yeah, that sounded great. And others where it sounded like this. There is a room and there is a room and, and there is a room and good food for us all. Sorry, America. Sorry. Currently, we've just done the lovely counting of the money, my favorite ritual. Three members from the team have gone to the casino to just check it out, check the conditions, and see what we're dealing with. Ultimate and Anonymous came back after scouting the casino. Luckily, it was suitable for team play. He drew us a helpful little map. There are a lot of blackjack pits in the casino, and each pit offered significant advantages and disadvantages. You only have to have one spot in like more here and more there. You don't want to bet 50 here and 100 there. If we're each there, then there's no pattern about a table being avoided. After lots of aggressive pointing at the diagram, we set on playing the pit near the high limit room. We were going to avoid the high limit room unless the main floor got busy. Staying in one pit would have the advantage that the BP wasn't avoiding a table. It's important that the BP would go to all of the tables in the space that he was in. So having enough spotters to cover each table in that area would help. The plan established, it was time for my first disguise. The main principle is that no one change is going to do too much, but lots of small changes together make a huge difference. Even things that would be unnoticed by surveillance would help me feel like a different person. <laughs> Things I do for a card carrying trip, eh? Hair cut pretty short so that it looks hopefully like I'm bald. Definitely can't put this on the main story. We were on our way to the first of only two casinos in the Bahamas, but this was our only shot at big player team play. If we got caught, the second casino would more than likely be informed and that would be it. We'd be down over 10K in expenses, all for nothing. As usual, Irish would be our big player. He'd be responsible for placing the big bets when we gave him the signal. With $2,000 bets, surveillance would be watching him closely. It's a lot of pressure. I was spotting, doing my best to blend in. To be honest, I was just trying to stay quiet and play the game. My American accent was shaky at best. Yeah, man, come in. Sure. Yeah, I don't mind. I didn't realize that doing an American accent while trying to count cards would be so difficult. I'd only been playing for around five minutes when the count rose, hitting a running 14, a true two, which is our agreed upon count for the BP to join. So I signaled in Irish. Josh. As he bought in, he was offered a player's card. He declined. Do you want to get a card? So if you're playing now, it may make sense because whatever you play now, if you get me waiting later, this wouldn't count. So do you want to get one now? The longer he could play before giving over ID, the longer it'd be before someone could look up his name and potentially back him off. But the pit boss came over and asked him again. Again, he turned it down. A few moments later, she asked, well, demanded his ID. Irish gave over his driver's license. He had to. There's only so many times he could decline handing it over before it looked suspicious. And suspicion is the last thing we needed. She passed his ID to a colleague, and in that moment, I'm sure me and Irish were thinking exactly the same thing. It might all be over. All they need to do is look him up, and that could be it. We'd calculated that we'd need to play for three hours in the Bahamas, but now it seemed like we might only get five minutes. We needed to make those five minutes count. The shoe was hot, so it was time to play. First hand, Irish bets two hands of $500. He gets a 17 and a 14. Against the dealer 10, it's a stand for hand one and drawing a card on hand two. 19, the dealer has a 12, draws a 10 and busts. The count has risen, so I signal for Irish to place two bets of $1,500 each. He busts the first hand and stands on a 19. The dealer draws a four and a 10, giving him 21. Ouch. Irish rebuys for $4,400 and does another two big bets. The dealer changed and play continued. Luckily for us, the dealer busts. At this point, we'd gained a new spectator at the table. One of the pit bosses was looking over, probably just making sure no mistakes were being made by the dealer, but he was watching very closely. Remember this guy, we'll be seeing him again later. Three more rounds before the count dropped, a push, a win, and a win. Irish was up from my table, $5,500. A few moments later, he got his ID back. Clearly no alarm bells had gone off. We were in the clear, for now. 
a slight tangent, I get a lot of DMs on Instagram of people asking me if counting cards is right for them. So I've put together a quick guide called Why You Probably Shouldn't Learn to Count Cards. I think it'll really help you understand whether or not card counting is right for you. It's linked in the description and it will take you less time to read than it would to drink a cup of coffee. Back to the video. At one point, Irish couldn't see that Ultimate was signaling him. He had a really high count. So I walked over and stood near his table. When Irish looked around, he saw me and realized I was trying to get his attention. This technique we would later refer to as lighthousing. I say we, but no one else calls it that but me. As a spotter, you can't really see what's happening at the other tables, nor should you really be looking over at them. So it can be really hard to get a sense sometimes of whether or not we're winning, but having Irish as a BP gives us a bit of a hint. <laughs> Whether we were up or down, the team play itself was going well. Although I can't say it was perfect, I made an error when Irish got to my table. Irish was dealt a soft 18 with the dealer's up card being an ace. Soft 18 is the most commonly misplayed hand in blackjack. People tend to think you should stand because you have an 18. But actually, there's a bunch of different factors that affect how you should play the hand. One of which is how high the count is on a dealer stands on soft 17 game. Changing how you play a hand based off the count is called deviating. And there is a massive list of deviations you can memorize. On our team, we have an agreed list that we all use. So here's what happened. After seeing the hand, I signaled to Irish to hit, which is the usual play. But then he hesitated. I took this hesitation to mean, are you sure you're right? I think we should deviate. Instead of trusting my own judgment, I totally second guessed myself thinking, oh wait a second, is it actually a stand? I thought that would be if it was a hit 17 game, but we're playing a stand 17 game. Oh, it must be, I must have got these modeled up. And I signaled for him to stand. Luckily doing the wrong thing can work out sometimes and we actually won the hand. But as soon as the hand was over, I realized we definitely made an error or I had made an error. It's not his fault. It's my job as a spotter to process what the information is, know if there's a deviation and then signal. Sure, or Irish can double check with me that I think I'm correct, but at the end of the day, it's my job to make that call. I'm driving the hand. Ultimately, I should be trusting my own skills and knowledge and not second guess myself because he's hesitating. By this point, I had totally lost track of time. I was pretty sure that we'd been playing at least an hour, but beyond that, I had no idea. And in terms of whether or not we were up, I thought I'd seen slightly more annoyed gestures from Irish than happy gestures. So I thought maybe we were down. Normally when I'm counting and signaling deviations and doing all that stuff, I trade a bit of speed for accuracy. For me, it's really important to process all the information, make sure that I'm correct before I make a move or do a signal. But then I casually surveyed the pit and saw one pit boss on the phone looking vaguely in our direction. It's hard to explain, but you get a bit of a sixth sense for when the casino is suspicious of you. And I had a strong feeling that that call was about Irish. They could have finally found him on the system or a surveillance person could have just figured out that we were counting. Either way, our time would soon be up. So it was time to really focus and push myself to play quickly and accurately so we could squeeze out a few more hands before it was all over. Just as we were finishing a hand, our game was interrupted. Excuse me, I need to see both of you, please. Security officer and game and board is here. I'll let you know when I speak with you. For some strange reason, they decided to round all of us up and back us off as a group. I said very little for the first part of the back off. We need to get some, some information on who you guys are. All right. I, mean, I need some identification too. I need to see it. You didn't leave it to security. I need to see it. I need a, I need a picture ID like a photo. I need this. Now. He gave me something. I need to know who you are. Irish immediately started trolling them. No, no. I need to know who you are. No, no. That's not, that's not. I, I, I didn't know who you are. He loves to pretend that he has no idea what's going on, that they're just concerned that maybe he can't afford to gamble at the level he's gambling at. Or perhaps they're worried that he's had too much to drink. You know, all those safe gambling measures to make sure that people aren't gambling their lives away. Oh, I like that as I do. Look at that. Look at that as I do. You see that? No longer welcome here. Yeah. You guys are going to cash out and leave. <laughs> I have nothing to do with that, I'm telling you. We have the right to refuse anybody to gamble. All right, can I go? Do you have a photo ID on you? Uh, I don't feel very comfortable with this conversation. What? Why do you need my ID? I need to know who you are. You're gambling in our casino. Okay, I understand. I don't know who you are. Sure. I need to know who you are. The only well, guy I know who you are is you give me a little legitimate photo ID. Okay, well, I'd, I'd rather just leave if it's... Okay. I need an ID. As a matter of fact, you're not allowed on this property ever again. We already have pictures of you on camera. If you return to this property at any time, you have to call the police and an arrest because you've been charged with trespassing. Alright? 
So at no time, at no time will you ever be allowed back on Bahama property. None of Bahama property. Why? Because I said so. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm not, I'm, not I'm not arguing. You don't with want to give me an ID because I said so. Okay. But if he doesn't right. give you an ID, you can't cash out. If you don't have an ID, but you, you have the tips, out. you can't cash out. You can't cash out the tips. The tips is of no value to you. We very quickly hit the point where they made it clear that we'd have to hand over our ID. Now, I highly, highly doubt that it's legal for them to refuse to cash us out without ID. Is, is that, that legal? That is legal. It's legal. What, what law is that? That's the gaming law. That's, yeah. that's the Gaming Control Act. The Gaming Control Act? Of the yeah. Bahamas, yes. Okay. The Bahamas. Bahamas. Can I look it up? Is that all right? You can look it up. Can look sure, it up. all right, thanks. Yeah. And I did briefly check the Gaming Board Bahamas website, which wasn't very helpful. Either way, giving over ID in this situation wasn't going to do much harm. They might fly us, but where to? The other casino in the Bahamas, they could do that anyway without our IDs. And we were going to fly to a totally different country in a couple of days, meaning the flyer would be meaningless. I handed it over, but only after they promised that they wouldn't share my ID. So th this isn't going to go outside this property? No. Not going to work. No. This is the jurisdiction that you're in? You promise? It's okay. against our company policy yeah. to share people uh, information from this. All right, if you promise me that you won't be sharing my ID, I'll give you my ID. They may not have shared my ID, but they did share my name and face to an online database casinos all across the US have access to. I should have made them pinky promise. Remember this guy from before? Well, he was back and took a look at my ID. This guy doesn't do YouTube videos, Steve Riggs. You do YouTube videos of gambling? No, I can't do it. He does YouTube videos of gambling. Okay. I don't think he's gonna subscribe. The session was over, we'd hit just under three hours, meaning we'd pretty much achieved our EV goal. EV is all well and good, but it was time to find out if we'd actually won. As a matter of fact, we are not allowed on this property ever again. We can never go back. <laughs> are we up? Are we up? I thought we were down. How much? I want to hit 20, I want to hit 20, I want to hit 20, ready? Yeah? 30,000 oh, yeah. yeah. It's time for the team graph. Well, it's a very short graph as we've only played one session, but taking into account the losses from the spotters, our total winnings were $27,649. One of the tricky things about blackjack trips is that they become all consuming. Your whole life becomes blackjack. I used to find it difficult on trips to keep on top of things like working out, but now I don't have to worry about that thanks to Copilot. Since using Copilot, I've genuinely not shut up about it to friends. This is way before they were sponsoring me. I was telling everybody about how much I love this service. Copilot is a whole fitness solution. It helps you reach your fitness goals with support from a real coach and a program designed to build consistency. I think most of us can relate to that feeling of you want to get fit, you want to go work out and you're really motivated and you go for it for like a week, it's perfect. And then that motivation for some reason just drops off. Well, over 75% of Copilot clients continue to work out after 100 days. That means that Copilot clients are nine times more likely to stick to their fitness goals. I discovered Copilot from YouTube Spawn and decided to try it. First thing that happened is that I chose a trainer based off my fitness goals. I got a call booked with Mike where he asked me about my fitness journey so far and what I wanted to achieve. He then designed a personalized workout for me that was based off my fitness goals, how much time I had to work out, how often I wanted to go to the gym and the equipment that I had available at the gym. The great thing about this is, is that fitness is super complicated. In the past when I've tried to design my own workout, it's been really tricky. I've never known if it's a well-rounded workout, if I've not done enough leg days or if there's exercises that I'm doing that aren't the most effective ones. I've spent so much time Googling workout programs, scrolling through, reading so many of them to try and build one to then realize that I don't even have that particular bit of kit at the gym and they don't suggest a good replacement exercise. But Mike created this excellent workout for me and I started doing it. The first session was way too intense. Come on, Mike, I'm not that buff. But it was super easy for me to let Mike know and he adjusted my workouts moving forward. Mike changes up my workouts just enough to keep them interesting, which I think is very key because it's a nice balance between getting better at the same workout, but then not getting bored with the workout. And also he's really good at replying to messages. If there's something I don't know about or want to ask him about, he's very, very speedy. For example, even though there's a little co-pilot person showing me how to do the exercise. For one of the exercises, I wasn't quite sure if my form was right. So I filmed a quick video of me doing the exercise and sent it to Mike, who sent me back a video showing me how I can improve. And super handy thing, when I'm on a blackjack trip, sometimes I have a gym or a very limited hotel gym or just a hotel room. I'll send Mike a video of the kit that there is in the gym and he'll design a workout based off that kit. Or if I don't have any kit, he'll give me a hotel themed workout. Not hotel themed, that would be weird. The app itself has got some really nice features like telling me when I've hit my new personal best, which I find very motivating. They've got whole streaks feature, which is very well designed 
at keeping me motivated to work out every time I have a scheduled workout. The thing I've realized is, is that the co-pilot team aren't just experts in fitness, they're experts in forming habits. They know how to design their fitnessy system to get you to stick to your routine. Speaking of getting you to stick to your routine, Mike regularly sends me motivational messages, which I do find very motivational. There's been the odd time when I'm like, oh, maybe today's the day I break the streak. And then there's smiley Mike telling me that I'm doing really well. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'll go to the gym. Look at him and his smiley face. Copilot is also significantly cheaper than hiring an in-person personal trainer. I've considered hiring a trainer in the past, but I way prefer this. My schedule changes a lot. So sometimes on the day, I don't know what time I'm gonna go to the gym. So having the flexibility to show up when I can and when I want to, it just works way better. One of the nice things about the Copilot trainers is that they're building workouts to suit you. You decide what you want and they help you achieve it. It's that simple. The trainers will never shame, pressure or judge you. They focus on what you can do today and build routines to help improve your quality of life. Click my co-pilot link to get a 14-day free trial with your own personal trainer.